analyst of the Alabama men's basketball. Does a terrific job and uh, joins us each week to talk about the Crimson Tide, a huge win over Ole Miss, and now they travel to Baylor tomorrow, 12 o'clock, and you can watch on ESPNU. We welcome in Brian Passing. Brian, always great to have you on. Thanks for being with us. Always a pleasure. How are you all today? Man, doing well. Thank you. And a beautiful day, my gosh, uh, here in Birmingham. Hey, when it comes to uh, this this Ole Miss kind of scuffle before the uh, game of the night, any details on that? How did all that stuff get started? You know, I, I missed it because we do. We started doing the first 30 minutes of our pregame show. We have an hour-long pregame show. We do the first 30 minutes from the lobby in Coleman Coliseum, and uh, it's broadcast on Facebook Live, so we're up there and have a set. It's a lot of fun, and fans come by. Well, I've always enjoyed it, but I was upset that we were up there and missed the, uh, the scuffle because uh, it was right in front of where – where Chris and I sit, so I would have had a, a much better report had we been sitting where we, we used to sit, but I missed I saw a little of the video footage, and when I heard about it, I, yeah, I'm against fighting and all those things, but uh, between you and me, Jay, I loved it, because I was worried <laughs> about our energy level after a, a tough loss to Tennessee, and really a, a disappointing loss considering how well the team played put themselves in a position to win the game. Then you had a short turnaround and had a really good Ole Miss team coming in. Uh, but I was worried how the team would be able to bounce back after that loss against the balls. And when I heard about the, the little pushing mash, it, match, it wasn't anything serious. I, I liked it. I, I thought it would definitely get our attention. It would get get uh, both teams fired up, but but it's especially the home team. And uh, that that's at least the team was – Focused. They had a lot of energy coming out. Uh, played really well early and sustained it for 40 minutes. I thought from from tip to final buzzer was probably Alabama's best performance of the year. Brian, we've talked to you several times about John Petty and his early season struggles, and then uh, at Tennessee he comes out and scores 30, including 20 in the last 20 minutes. And then uh, against Ole Miss, starts shooting I think five or six from the field, ends up with a uh, uh, team high 15 points what, what's been the difference in John Petty these last two games well I, I knew it would happen for him from the three-point line he, he's been up and down shooting the ball this year but uh, John Petty uh, whether his shots are falling or not I, I would always consider him to be one of the, the top shooters in the SEC uh, even though there's some some ups and downs uh, John has obviously worked a lot on his game and he's improved in in pretty much every area. And so I knew once his shot started falling, he would be a difference maker on this team. And it definitely that happened against the volunteers. It continued against the, the Ole Miss Rebels on Tuesday night. And hopefully that will be the case in Waco, Texas tomorrow. But uh, John Petty is really uh, an improved player. He, he's someone who this year, when his shot's not falling, he's helping his team in other ways. He's defending at a higher level he's finding open teammates he's rebounding he's taking the ball he's taking the ball to the basket uh better than he did a year ago so once you add in the three-point shot which is what he's known for uh he becomes awfully dangerous and he's a difference maker on this team and he has been the last couple of games right now uh baylor is 12 and 6 overall uh and four and two in the big 12 that puts him in third place in the big 12 conference only a half game out of first how important is this game on uh, tomorrow at 11 a.m., 11 a.m. tip? Uh, how important is this for Alabama just in terms of building that NCAA tournament resume? Well, it, it would be a, a great win to go on the road against one of the hottest teams, not only in the Big 12, but there's not a lot of teams playing uh, in the country. Uh, that like, like Baylor has recently, they just went on the road and one of the toughest places to play historically, and that's West Virginia and Morgantown, and really put it on um, uh, West Virginia. Played extremely well, won that game with ease. Uh, in West Virginia, they've had their ups and downs this year, but they were just coming off a, a win against Kansas at home. So difficult place to play. This Baylor team, uh, they had some ups and downs in the non-conference, but they're playing really well. I, I would say it's two teams playing – their best basketball of the year, and, and Baylor is looking more and more like an NCAA tournament team. So these are, are games that will absolutely get the attention uh, of the NCAA tourna com tournament committee. And the thing that, that I like about Alabama's remaining schedule 
is there are so many opportunities for quality wins, uh, quadrant one and two wins, which is what the, the NCAA tournament uh, committee is looking at. This would be a, a quadrant one win or loss. So uh, the good the good news is uh, you've got a great opportunity. Uh, the losses don't hurt you as much as uh, as other losses would, and that's the case for the re- the remainder of the schedule. Now, obviously, that's not the approach that the players will take, that the coaches will take, but. Uh, as a fan, as an analyst, I can look at the remaining schedule and and look at all the opportunities. Now you got to start to win some of them, and Alabama has that that right now uh, leads the SEC in quadrant one and two wins, uh, which is something that is very important. And it's why I think this this team uh, in Alabama is in a really good position in terms of making the NCAA tournament, uh, and I think in a, in a better position than we were about this time last year. Uh, but still, obviously, a ton of basketball to be played. Big game Saturday and, and each and every game on the remainder of the schedule. Uh, big for Alabama. Brian, this is Antonio. What is the it factor of of Kyra Lewis Jr. that made Avery want to start a 17-year-old kid who probably should still be in high school? Well, he's he's like you, and that you can't deny talent. <laughs> he's the guy. The, the kid can play. I mean, he he can play, and that's the bottom line. It doesn't matter if he's seventeen, twenty three. Uh, he can play, and and what I really like about him and been so impressed uh, with Kyra is his maturity. Uh, he, he's obviously got talent, but to come into college basketball and do what he's done. It is really impressive. He plays within himself. He hasn't had to score at a high level as, as we saw earlier, and I think it's because other guys are starting to step up, like John Petty starting to make shots. Other guys, Dante Hall playing playing his best basketball of his career. He's had four straight double-doubles, and, and Kyra is the type of player that doesn't have to, to score 20. He, he's going to get guys involved. If an open shot presents itself, he's going to rise up with confidence and knock it down. Uh, but he's been a, a terrific player and one of the top young point guards in the country. Give us your thoughts about Baylor and just as far as the, what Alabama's going to do to beat this team. And then also moving on, we won't talk to you before the Mississippi State game. Um, just a, l- a look at both of these teams and these up to uh, coming games. Well, Baylor's always tough. And Scott Drew does a, a terrific job, always has a very talented roster, and that's the case. I think what has uh, got them really going on the right track is their point guard, uh, Makai Morris. He's a transfer uh, from Yale uh, and coming off a 29-point performance against West Virginia against that pressure uh, in Morgantown. So terrific point guard. They've got talent all around. Jared Butler is a guy that signed with Alabama, ended up uh, transferring before he, he really ever got to campus. Uh, and he's a freshman, and, and Alabama fans will, will know that name. He can shoot. Uh, they've got um, depth. They're playing well, and, and they defend. So it's going to be two teams that uh, historically have um, taken a lot of pride in, in toughness, and, and I expect that to be the case. And Mississippi State uh, is a team that, under Ben Howland, is really uh, starting to hit their stride. They, they're an NCAA tournament team. They're ranked for the first time in a number of years uh, so, like pretty much the entire SEC, uh, Mississippi State is is really trending in the right direction, and I think they'll be in the tournament uh, for the first time in a long time. So, a couple of uh, tough matchups coming up, but uh, fortunately, Alabama's playing pretty well, so hopefully that'll continue. Then a big one the following Saturday as well with Auburn uh, coming up and uh, the Iron Bowl on the basketball court. Uh, we'll talk to you about that one coming up on uh, next Friday. Brian, as always, thanks for your time, my man, and uh, good luck to the Crimson Tide this weekend. All right. Appreciate it, guys. Y'all have a good day.